Hey everybody and welcome back to Split Couch Games. I'm Scott. And I'm Ben. And uh, we just got done, literally like 10 minutes ago, we just finished watching the Microsoft E3 press conference for 2017. And uh, they brought a lot of games. Yeah, it was, what, 42? Something like 42, that? 42... It was like 42, 44, and then like 22 console exclusives. Yeah, it was 42 games and 22 that were exclusive to the Xbox yeah. One slash PC platform. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so they definitely delivered on the game, like the game's promise. Um, and a lot of what I saw I liked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they had, like, a, a pretty stereotypical, like, mid-show reel where they showed off, like, a whole bunch of indie games all at once. Mm -hmm. um, and, obviously, I mean, even if it were AAA games, I would always prefer to see more. Yeah. Um, but especially from indie games, because I feel like, you know, a little, like, three-second clip isn't ever really going to be enough to sell anybody. So, that's a yeah. little unfortunate, but... I feel like people that are interested in indie games probably have their, you know, resources and outlets for that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's a good way of just, like, saying, like, here's what's coming. You can you can go find out more if it looks interesting to you. Yeah. But I kind of felt the same way throughout it. Like, the it was, um, I think, uh, 115 minutes, I think you said it was. Um, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Like a, it was 105 minutes. 105. That's the word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 115 sounded wrong, but um, it was 105 minutes, and I felt like no game in particular really got enough time, uh, except for yeah. Forts, Forza and Sea of Thieves, and then um, Anthem. But everything else, I feel like, just kind of came in a rush, and I don't remember a whole lot. Yeah. From those and games, I, mean, I honestly don't even feel like anthem got enough time for being like a brand new ip and seemingly like you know a, a pretty new concept not that you know a, a game like that hasn't been done before because mm -hmm. i mean obviously we have games like you know the division and destiny and that kind of thing but yeah um it it felt it felt like very much a, a surface level type of thing so yeah. i am interested in seeing more of that as it comes out you know over yeah. the next year or so but yeah um, it's so yeah i mean i feel like that's all they had to show at this point i don't know i don't yeah. think that they could really dig much deeper into it yeah um but yeah we'll talk about that um before we do that like i do also want to touch on the e3 press conference um because or the ea play i guess yeah because that they way showed off we a don't couple of Cool spend things. the entire time talking about this yeah well i mean <laughs> uh, i mean that's mainly just you know because we do have some things to say about the ea play um as opposed to yeah you know solely focusing on xbox okay so i'm gonna for anyone here who's hoping for in-depth analysis of all the sports games um this is not gonna be the podcast for you um uh, yeah i don't think there's ever gonna be a podcast from well, it, it, let me rephrase. There's never going to be a podcast involving me <laughs> that looks at sports games. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do want to say like I I don't like I know that EA has done those like story modes, and I don't know if they've been good in the past, but I've never cared to play them. So I just, like if I have a sports game, I'm just playing the game for the sports. I'm not trying to get a story out of it. So yeah, I, I feel like it looks like it was a decent looking are. story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's always confused me why they are trying to incorporate that. Like, I don't know if maybe they did it once and they saw their sales numbers improved and that's why they keep doing it or what. But yeah, it seems uh, kind of like a silly concept to me. But it's an I mean, like it's interesting. Um, I don't know. It kind of just reminds me of like a Tony Hawk Underground kind of story, where it's sure. like this is what's going on, but like you're really just skating. But anyway. Um, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, uh, let's just touch on the Battlefield 1. Um, it's new getting more maps, stuff. New game new mode. Woo. Yeah. Like, if you <laughs> like mean, Battlefield it, 1, you're going to be excited about it, but it's not going to, like, make you go out and buy Battlefield 1. Yeah. It's pretty much, yeah. 
Um, I mean, basically, I mean it. Not only that, but it. Battlefield One is still following their like you know, you can buy the expansions individually or. You can buy, like, the premium pass and then get all of them, and you save, like, 15, 20 bucks, something like that. Um, yeah. Which, I mean, I don't necessarily, like, disagree with that as a model of DLC, but DICE has a bad habit of setting up their playlists and matchmaking and all that kind of stuff in such a way that it that whenever they release new expansions, it just heavily segregates... Yeah. The player base. So, I mean, that's you know, how it like, all, like, either you're doing it like how Gears 4 or Titanfall 2 does it, or like even Halo, I think, um, where you either give everyone the maps for public matchmaking or you suffer, um, yeah, segregated populations and no one's ever going to get like the full experience. Cause even if like yeah. you do buy the expansions, you have a limited player pool. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. It, it, yeah, it's I mean, uh, it's just the way of doing it. And uh, in the past, like I felt like it worked when Battlefield was, um, I guess like at its prime with like Battlefield Three, um, mm-hmm. uh, and then I guess like Four, but in the later years, because obviously it had its launch woes. But um, it it worked then, I think, because like they have such heavily populated games and everything and Mm -hmm. um i haven't purchased any of the expansions for battlefield one or anything so i can't necessarily directly speak to that but um i know at the very least with hardline like yeah you could pretty much never find well i mean hardline had just a small population anyway it did yeah so um but yeah um yeah like you said we can't really speak to any of that but just wanted to touch on it if you guys want us to discuss that more you can let us know but uh yeah like there's there's so much more i want to talk about yeah the so thing i just that, want to move yeah the thing that we really need to talk about hold on hold on what we're not there yet <laughs> how are we not there yet what else we happened have, during ea play there's like there, there's i think there was like one other thing i just want to touch on it the uh a way out oh yeah yeah which looks super cool um yeah it, it looks I, like it'd be a nice like kind of co-op experience and everything yeah and i'm all about co-op experiences because i feel like there's not enough of those in the world yeah it's a little it's an interesting choice making it have to be a couch co-op well they it can be online but i think it splits your screen regardless sure i think that's uh, what they're trying to get at okay okay um, then that, that's fine to me, but like, it, it just seems odd that it's like, okay, well you have to be in this place with the person. And yeah. Yeah. Cause be I mean, it, that, that's what I thought at first, but, um, later on in the presentation, he does say, you know, you can play, you know, on the same couch or online with a friend, okay. okay. um, but it is a split screen experience. So to me, okay. that says that like, you're going to get the, you know, one half of a screen, no matter what. I mean that's fine. Like that's the way that the game is supposed to be presented. That's totally fine with me. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm excited to see that. I'm excited. I'm always excited for good cooperative experiences. Yep. That. That's all I had to say about that. All right, Ben. Go. All right. Well, Start I was just going to say the, the 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 thing that we really just need to talk about before we move to Xbox is a uh, Star Wars, in general, but also specifically Star Wars Battlefront Two. Um, cause it appears that they went through and fixed a lot of, if not all of the problems that I had with the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean like the biggest complaint I had about the game was the fact that like, you know, if you wanted to get in a, you know, a TIE fighter or an X-Wing or something, or if you wanted to become like one of the special troops, you had to go find a token on the battlefield that had yeah. a set spawn point. And pick it up. Yeah. And that was the dumbest game mechanic ever. Because mm-hmm. all it resulted in was just people camping those tokens. And yeah. it wasn't a fun experience. I don't know how that ever got checked off in terms of, like, approval yeah. by anybody. Like, I mean, you they could make the have... argument that, like, it turns it into more of an arena shooter. 
as opposed to a class like kind of uh, but sure it's not i guess it's but not that, great. that's that's not what battlefront is supposed to be yeah I um, I feel like that like what your sentiments are is that they missed the mark on what the old battlefield or battlefront games were in the past and it seems well, like they're going yeah, to hit that with I battlefield mean, too. I mean basically that that was my main issue is that like they looked at the old games and they're like okay let's not do that but I feel like they went so far past the mark that they mm-hmm. went into like bad game design and like just general game design faux pas territory (laughs) yeah because i mean like some of their choices were just simply not good yeah whereas others were just like okay i see what you're doing and that's cool but it doesn't really work yeah so i don't know but um yeah i i'm i'm pretty excited about battlefront 2 in general um Mm -hmm. but more specifically i'm a little confused and disappointed that that was literally the only Star Wars game we saw. I'm not that confused by that because I feel unless there was a release imminent, like this November there's going to be a new Star Wars RPG or anything, um, yeah. you're really you're just going to um, confuse the brand, I guess, where like, oh, there's a new Battlefront game coming out and there's the movie coming out and then there's this new RPG coming out. Like, it's yeah. going to get lost in the shuffle. If it's not coming out this year, then there's no reason to tell people about it until probably early next year. Yeah, I guess I can see that. I don't um, know. It's just knowing that there I agree, are so many other games in development. Like, I'm surprised that we haven't at least gotten, like, a teaser trailer or something. You know? Because, I mean, yeah. like, we, we got, like, a little <laughs> bit of a sneak peek last year. So I, I assumed mm. we would have seen something a little bit more this year, even if it was released for, like, early next, you know, yeah. like, early 2018 or something, but I don't know. I mean, yeah. maybe they're, you know, they hit some roadblocks and they're thinking they might have to delay and that's why they didn't do it or something, so. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, I, I think that it's just a marketing thing at this point. Yeah. Like, they felt like it was best to just not worry about it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Um, I do want to, before we move completely past Battlefront, I do want to say that, like, I wish it was first person. Like, I mean, the... it is. No, it's not. Is it? Yeah. It's both. You can switch between the two. No, but there's, there's, no, there's no reason to switch, in bet- switch to first person. Like, you're going to want to be third person. Right? Because of the camera angles and stuff. I mean, I prefer first person. I play better in first person. But that puts you at a disadvantage. Like, I'm sure, like, you, like, I mean, it will it, probably be advantageous it, to, like, yeah, switch from like third if, person to first person. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I feel like you are looking at it from a, I want to be the best that I can be, you know, like, super competitive Scott, instead of, I'm well, just because, trying to have fun Scott. Because it's a competitive shooter. You No, have, it's not. It is. I, it's a competitive shooter. It's PvP. You gotta be the best. Okay. Anyways, like, moving on. <laughs> anyway, I just feel like that was a little odd. Um, but the heroes look awesome. I think I we only saw Boba Fett, Darth Maul, and Ray. Yeah. Darth Maul looks like a fucking beast. I'm fucking excited. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I think it looks good, and I'm. I'm hopeful, and I'll probably end up getting it. Yeah, and it, it, it looks does. much better than, you know, their first go at it. It, it kind of seems like this is the game that should have come out, mm-hmm. but then they decided not to. Yeah. And I don't know. But yeah. Anyways, moving and, on. Um, well, I do, I, I do well, one last thing. I do want to say that, like, I appreciate that um, EA came out and said, hey... We we like, we saw the feedback for Battlefront two or Battlefront one, and we listened to it because one like I feel like that's them holding themselves accountable. If like if they mess up this one, then it's on them as opposed to before. It's like oh we just messed up. Yeah. Like now it's like it's on them and like we listened, and we're making the game that you guys want, and I think that's a big, like a very brave move on their part. And yeah. Yeah, 
Sorry, there's, there's probably going to be a lot of birds tweeting in the background of my audio right now. That's fine. Uh, they just all it's... of a sudden got really loud. I wonder if they're like fighting out there or something. Um, it's a birdemic. <laughs> anyways, um, so moving on to the part that some people probably really care about, um, which is Xbox uh, Scorpio is what it's most people tiny. know it as. What, yeah, it's tiny, tiny, but it's for just so we can. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Call it the proper name. Um, and funny story about this, um, but it, it is officially called the Xbox One X. Mm. And uh, what was it like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, or something? We recorded yeah, a podcast e- doing E3 yeah. predictions, right? Yep. And you know, I, I like we were doing like predictions of like what the real name is going to be. And it mm-hmm. was literally the day after that we recorded. Yeah. Um, is when I was like, they're gonna call it the Xbox One X, and yep, I was joking, but apparently that's that's what they did. Yeah, no. The some other people predicted that like during the week leading up, um, based on some stuff that they saw, and the part of the, the reason why people were predicting it is because if you take the xbox one x and then like um take the uh first letters of everything it spells out xbox like x box oh. one x yeah huh that's kind of clever yeah so <laughs> so that happens so it's called the xbox so we can just refer to it as the xbox if we really wanted to yeah anyways um, xbox one x or we could just call uh, it the x we're gonna um, call it, yeah let's call it like we're gonna call it short because we don't want to like repeat xbox one x every three seconds here yeah because that's um, a mouthful so the x is super tiny like i thought it was gonna be at least the size of the original xbox one the xbox one um yeah. no it's definitely it's smaller than the uh the, the s. s have you seen an s in person no they're but i know tiny. it's yeah they're they're tiny <laughs> And like, it is smaller <coughs> than the S, which I didn't think was even really possible coming from Microsoft. Like, yeah, f- coming from Sony or something. Like, yeah, sure, I could see it. Like, yeah, they're it, they're good at making that like form factor compacted tech, but mm-hmm. Microsoft has apparently decided that they're going to be good at it. And when we first saw it, I initially thought that it didn't have a DVD drive or anything in it at yeah. all. But I guess it does. It, is it, it maybe like Blu-ray. under like that Wait, like lip? almost that yeah, it has maybe i it might be on the side or something i don't know yeah but yeah it's it's there it should be somewhere but, it has like, to be it's... they said it can play the high definition blu-ray he said <laughs> it has to be there somewhere it's like it has the power to play the. we said it had the power to play the blu-ray <laughs> we didn't say yeah, that it right could. <laughs> yes exactly um, um but no so uh it has all the teraflops all the transistors it's gonna be seven four- million transistors yeah, it's going to be uh, four ninety nine, so f- uh, five hundred bucks basically, which I think everybody saw coming, but like we didn't yeah. really want it to be that much. Yeah, um, I was really hoping for like at least a four fifty, just to like so that it could be like it a bit. in the yeah. f- could be in the four hundred, so they didn't have to be like, well, it's five hundred dollars, but like yeah. it's four fifty. Yeah, I but I mean, it, for the target market that they're going for, I think it kind of makes yeah. sense. But um, all of this, you know, the, the X and its capabilities, its price point, combined with the announcements that they had about backwards compatibility, mm-hmm. um, which for those that didn't pick up on it, maybe haven't heard, um, they are now going to be introducing original Xbox games. Um, so things like Crimson Skies and that kind of stuff, <sighs> um, which is fun. amazing. But at the same time, <clears throat> it, I, I feel like this almost further solidifies my theory in that they are trying to create, like, essentially a, a, a basically what should be a Steam box. You know, like this mm. at home console that can do everything. And it's still going to be an Xbox. Like, it's not going to be able to connect yeah. to Steam or anything like that. But it's going to be, like, fully backwards compatible and everything. And, you know, like, going forward, games will just have, like, a... You must have, at minimum, this. Yeah. And Yeah, I mean, I think that that's... 
completely like, again like i think that's completely valid and i I would imagine that it's just going to be like the phones that we have now where it's like, oh, eventually, you know, you can't use your iPhone 4 for anything else. Yeah. Like, which is completely, like, if you expect that your technology is going to last you forever and play all the new software and stuff, and like, I got bad news for you. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work like that. Um, yeah, no. So, I mean, that that's what I think that they're building up to, and they may not be ready to announce that yet, but I feel like they will eventually. I mm -hmm. did they s announce a release date for Crackdown three at all? Um, I think early twenty eighteen, maybe. Hmm. Okay. Because I, I was maybe. just gonna say, don't quote me on that. I, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if at this point, like, there was some exclusive that they're holding on to that they're planning on making an exclusive or something at like next E three. You know, like they're they're gonna announce this like new business structure that they're going with or whatever. November seventh. It's going to be a launch title for the Xbox One S. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I I, think all of that kind of solidifies my theories on, um, you know, like what Microsoft is going to be doing going forward. And yeah, I don't Maybe Maybe that makes me crazy. I don't know. But yeah, I mean... I think yeah. it. I think it's fair. Um, yeah. I do also want to point out that if you're not ready to upgrade to the Scorpio, you can get a Xbox One S, which is still a really good console. You can do, um, uh, alt, what's the word? UDR, UDR gaming, which is not for four K. HDR. HDR. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't really um, have anything to do with resolution at all. Sure, but it's just it's there lighting yeah. yeah but it's there okay. um and it does actually my my friend who i played gears 4 with he has an xbox one s and a 4k television and it looks better on his than mine yeah like, that's because gears 4 is set up to yeah. utilize anyway HDR i'm just saying that for 250 dollars you can get a good experience with an <laughs> xbox one s that is yes. all i'm saying yes you can um, so, but it's only two fifty for like the next week or so. Yeah. Um, then it goes back to three hundred. But yeah. uh, like, if for whatever reason you're like, oh, five hundred dollars is too much for a Scorpio, or an Xbox One X, that's an option for you. If you yeah. were, yeah. Um. So anyway, into the games. Um, Forza Seven is coming for <sighs> those of you who enjoy racing games. Yeah, um, I mean, if you enjoyed Forza, you're gonna get the new Forza game. Yeah. I don't really, um, like, it looks pretty. Yeah, looks beautiful as always. Forza games do, yeah. Uh, so, get it, don't get it. Like, that's, like, they yeah. they have a new partnership with Porsche, which is cool. Yeah, they, they showed yeah. off a brand new Porsche on stage. Yeah, uh, I was really disappointed that the guy didn't get it and drive off with it. That'd be the funniest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm sure you're a little bit okay with it because now you don't have to drop twenty five hundred dollars on Scorpios. Because <laughs> uh, we, we were sitting it, there watching it, and he's like, "I'm gonna buy five Xbox One Xs if he gets in it and drives away." <laughs> and I was, and then, <laughs> I was gonna hold him to it. I was gonna be like, "And one of them's gonna be mine." <laughs> I would have done it too. Because it would have been so worth the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm guessing he wasn't allowed to. Probably he probably, he probably joked about it. He was like, hey guys, what if I did this? <laughs> and everyone was like, no. No. Can, how about not? But um, but yeah, so let's talk about Anthem for a little bit. Uh, okay. I think that that was probably the most exciting well, of for the some. reveals. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm sure... <laughs> I, I'm fucking stoked about the new Metro game. Sure, we'll talk that about that looks, in a second. You know, fun, but yeah, let's yeah. let's start with Anthem. Like, obviously, Anthem is there wasn't a lot of information. It just showed like some gameplay, um, but it looked fun. You looked like you were basically Iron Man and flying around and stuff. Yeah, I'm curious as to if there's going to be a reason to ever actually walk. <laughs> They seem to think yeah. it was because they stopped flying for a while, and I'm like, why would you do that? Well, I mean, um, it probably just something like, you know, you can't shoot or anything while you're flying. Seems like a mistake. 
I mean, that's just a guess. They, they have yeah. to balance it somehow. I mean, it's either that or maybe, like, only certain suits can shoot while they're flying, but they're also, like, yeah. really weak, so it's kind of a trade-off type of thing. I mean, who knows? Yeah. We don't really know a whole lot about the game, so... I mean, it looks pretty. Yeah, it looks I really pretty. Like, I like the art style. I like the, um... Fighting the nature around you and stuff is cool. Yeah. Um... And the and like the dropping in and out of games looks like a lot of fun, like falling in from the sky like Titanfall. Yeah. And Assuming like, that's how like it ends up shipping and everything, because yeah. we all know that it's you know possible that they show something super fancy and then they realize, hey, this won't actually work on a ben, console. Please. It's. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna. It has to be able to work on the Xbox One X. I mean, like, maybe. It I mean, has to. But it, there's also just development changes, period. I, I mean, know. We, we all saw how The Division used to look and how it shipped. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Um, so am I. I mean, it is Bioware. That gives me a little bit more hope than what it would be if it were Ubisoft or something like that. But Ooh, shots fired at Ubisoft. Well, I mean, are, can, are we shocked? Like, are, are we going to be shocked? No, I just. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the Assassin's Creed game looks. In... Assassin's Creed Origins looks interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I did like I sent out that tweet, where it's basically saying like, did they take like the unreal unrealistic portions of? You, yeah, you Assassin's sent that Creed out before the end of it. Yeah, before. Okay, so like. <laughs> it was, uh, I my. What was my uh original thought oh yeah, yeah yeah. so it was the eagle so like using the eagle to fly around i was like yeah. i understand that's a gameplay thing and i was like but like is that really something that we need like yeah but i guess it's like it's not that much different than like the eagle vision from before where you like literally got to see your target yeah like but, through walls and stuff but like i don't know it just it didn't feel right Look, looking at it, yeah, but it's it, not like it it's not a big deal. Just you know, a UAV from the last several games that they've put out. Yeah, so like I'm not like I'm not uh, like worried about that necessarily. It was kind of just a joke. Then the end of the thing happened, where she shot an arrow, <laughs> and the guy was running down the stairs, and the arrow was gonna miss him, and then the arrow just like said, "No, I'm not gonna miss him," and just like. <laughs> Yeah. angled down i don't know <sighs> and it like it was it was subtle it was subtle enough to where it might have just been like a glitch uh or, i don't think like, it was that subtle i think you're giving it a bit too much credit there sure because it, it was pretty blatant like it was pretty it was, blatant. It, it, was <sighs> it, it was bad because i mean it wasn't even like it changed trajectory like for like the last half second of travel like it still was yeah. flying for like a second or two before it hit him yeah well i mean maybe like my thought is like maybe there's something where like you lock on and then um if you're locked on in that first person mode then like it's always going to hit the target but like it had to adjust which is a really weird thing to leave in if it's because it was all pre-recorded i would think yeah, it yeah, was it was actually it was all pre-recorded because pre they were editing it and cutting between places. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe you just have the ability to shoot arrows like that. It's fine. Yeah, I don't know. No I mean, it's. I'll be interested to learn more about it. Um, I'm sure it's going to be at PAX this mm -hmm. year, PAX West. Which, so mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm sure I'll learn more about it there. But. Um, I don't know, because the ancient Egypt theme is really interesting to me. I feel like that could lead to a lot of, like, really kind of cool moments and everything. But mm -hmm. at the same time, if that's how they're going to treat it, where it's just like, oh, well, magic and yeah. arrows that can, like, just bend around yeah, corners the and other, that kind of thing. The, oh, the other part of the my tweet was the uh, giant snake thing. Yeah. Where I'm like... But, I mean, this... th that, that just kind of leans a little more into, like, the... Oh, that, you know, ancient myth is actually real. Yeah. And, I mean, that's Which is... not anything that they haven't done before. Yeah. It's just I, been... I don't know. It's just... 
you know, up until now, it hasn't been giant monsters that have been the well, myth. It's been more, you know, was secret a, treasures and that kind of thing. There was a crack in, in uh, Assassin's Creed... Four? Or three? No. It was a Etio game. Or a game. Black Flag, I guess. It, it was an Etio game where, you, like, you went in and you were, like, under a church or something and, like, there was some water and, like, if you did some things... Like, oh, it yeah, in. the Easter egg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like... Maybe I don't know. It just it, it, again, it just kind of like struck me as odd. Like yeah. the trailer, like or the gameplay reveal or whatever, just struck me as odd. And that's, I, yeah, the, I, like you said, I'm looking forward to hearing more. Yeah, the Assassin's Creed franchise as a whole has been kind of like this seesaw of emotion. Um. Mm -hmm. because like it'll go back and forth between you know it's like they have a really good game and then they have a game that's not so great and i know that syndicate um received a lot of praise from the community um when it came out and everything but i feel like part of that is simply just rooted in well it wasn't unity yeah it was better than unity because and i mean not that syndicate is a bad assassin's creed game but it's not Mm -hmm good like it's not like you know Ezio levels of greatness um yeah. i mean i do agree that it is like the best assassin's creed game since probably the Ezio trilogy um but it just also has a lot of problems with it and yeah you know they mentioned bringing rpg elements into the assassin's creed game you know like more than ever before and that part kind of makes me sad because I have never wanted RPG elements in Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Like, if, if there was... You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> yeah. It, like, when they first started doing it, I was like, eh, I mean, okay, like, I can kind of get it. Because, like, it was always sort of there. Um, mm-hmm. you know You're I mean, upgrading the, your equipment and stuff. Yeah. But, like, now it seems like it's just straight up like, oh, you can find a better sword, like, on this dude's body. Yeah, it's just going to really slow everything down. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know, I don't know how that's going to play out. It'll I be mean, it's just going to play, it, it's going to basically join the Fall of Far Cry, that one, not, not, not Fallout, Fallout. Mm. different, different, different studio, turns yeah. out, but uh, Far Cry, Division, Wildlands, basically every game that is loot-based. Anyway, um, do you want to not have to upload a 7 gigabyte video again? So, quick gush about Metro. Exodus. I mean, it's Which, a fucking Metro I, game. That's all that really needs to be said. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean it, it looks really good. I, I, I loved the first two and can't wait for this one. So, that, that's I, about I, it. I'm really curious as to how much the name Exodus came about because of the xbox one x probably name. none whatsoever i'm sure some like someone had to think about it and been like well it's not an exclusive so it's true i mean if it were Is it not? Exc- no i thought metro the first metro was maybe i don't know it might have been on pc remember. i don't know i mean I, I didn't think it was an exclusive but i could be wrong but while you look that up um, so we're getting a new Metro game. I'm freaking stoked about that. Um, but we're also going to be getting player unknowns, uh, battlegrounds on Xbox one, which is freaking amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm curious see. how that's going to actually play. Um, because precision is so important, but, uh, um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, like, between that and the Darwin Project, I think we're going to have, like, our fill of, you know, like, arena-style games. Especially since the well, calling is just recently... Yeah, the calling. Uh, ...come to Xbox One as well. So, um, I do want to talk about the Darwin Project, because I thought that that was really interesting. Um, and I think that's the next, like, the evolution of the Battle Royale. Because, it, like... They presented it in a really weird way, but like I think I understood what they were going for, mm-hmm. where it is an eSport as opposed to just a game that's played, because the guy was up there and he was like, 
calling it, um, and casting it basically. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. And Microsoft is trying to push out their um, Mixer streaming platform, their Twitch competitor. Yeah. Um, and their their big thing is that you can interact with like the viewers can interact directly with the game mm-hmm. um so i think it'd be super awesome if you know you're watching your favorite streamer they're hurt and kind of like how the sponsors in hunger games were able to send supplies yeah you could send supplies to your favorite streamer yeah um and support them in tournaments like obviously you'd have to balance it because you know i don't know if you don't really watch a lot of esports but there's in pretty much every esport that I've seen, there's always like one group or one player that's super popular. Yeah, and namely, most mostly because they're the best. So like, when they're the best, they just get better because people support them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that 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 idea is really cool. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I, I feel like once all these games come out, like we're, we're going to have enough to choose from that. I think everybody's going to be able to find something they like Mm -hmm. primarily. Um, but, uh, yeah, (coughs) the uh, one thing I thought was interesting was that they announced black desert online was coming to the Xbox one, which is strange just because I, I feel like that's way more of a, I don't really know how else to put it, but it, like a, more of a hardcore MMO, and I don't feel like MMOs have ever really traditionally done well on console outside of Final Fantasy fourteen. But I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, I, I suppose I, it also depends know. on what you classify as an MMO. So, I mean, um, I would argue that um, there just hasn't been like a solid MMO that's really like. And, like, by solid, I mean, like, one that's had, like, the development put behind it to make it good. Like, Neverwinter was on there, but, like, that's not high quality yeah. as far as MMOs And I goes. suppose uh, Elder Scrolls Online is it pretty much always doing well. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I feel like So, I think, still... like, if you put the budget behind it and make it good, ex- like, console gamers want that MMO experience, but they don't want, like, a second-class MMO experience. Yeah. If that makes sense. Hmm. So hopefully it works out. Yeah, hopefully. All right. Um, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. There is a ton of games. So if there's anything that you guys saw that we didn't talk about and you want to hear our thoughts on, please let us know. Um, we There was so much and not enough time to cover it all. Yeah. Um, like, I'm sure we could probably have an entire podcast about, like, you know, Path of Exile shadow of war all that kind of stuff oh shadow of war look that was weird the 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 australian orc threw me for a loop yeah but he was at like, the same time you're like i didn't know i wanted this until now but at the same time i was like this isn't this kind of like take it almost took me out of the world of lord of the rings a little bit yeah like, where it's just kind of like eh, eh. yeah it's cute but like do i really want cute from my lord of the rings Yes. But it's definitely... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I answered anyway. the question for you. Thank you. Anyway, uh, so we're going to wrap this up. And uh, there'll be... For those of you... Just a heads up, like, our Wednesday podcast is not going to be E3 related because we had to record that beforehand. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about E3 and, like, if anything else comes out from like Sony or whatever, we'll probably mention that in next week's podcast. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Nick. let us know, like tweet at us, let us know in the comments if there's anything that happens at E3 that you guys want us to talk about. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm sure there's probably something going on during the Bethesda press conference right now that I would want to be seeing, but you know, well, we had to get this done. Yeah. I'll, I'll but, watch uh, it later. It's no big deal. Yep. All right. We will uh, see you guys next time on uh, Split Couch Games. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.